Hi, I'm Zay Lamprey. In this episode, I go three sheets to Portugal. I drink wine with a count. <laughs> Yay, it's a party! Just this party. Yeah. And I join the Trite Brotherhood, two of my brethren of the, of the stomach and the Lamprey Brotherhood. Okay, I'll, I'll have that one. It's a good show. You wanna hug me? We can hug. You'll enjoy it. Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe, getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. Warning, if you ever go drinking in Portugal, you might not know what they're serving. Good for your mind? What are you talking about? Don't you feel your mind just like the eternal sunshine? No? More on that later. But first, Portugal. Home to many famous explorers, people like Vasco da Gama, Magellan, and now, this guy, me. But rather than retrace these guys' travels all around the world, I'll launch a drinking expedition through the homeland they often left behind. I'll navigate the Porto River where the liquid gold, port wine, flows like water. I'll taste the nectar of the beer gods in search of the answer to what makes this local beer so prized. That is a smooth going style. I'll uncover the riddle behind a red wine. It's called green. But it's red. It is red. And I'll drink deeper into the wells of mystery to see if I can reach a higher plane of drinking consciousness. Are you right, saying, what the f is that, man? All along the way, I'll encounter people in high places with funny outfits and shiny medallions. Will they indoctrinate me into their local drinking ways? Kiss it, Kiss it. Find out when I go. My journey begins on the banks of the Porto River, where a beverage that bears the name of this town flows like the river waters that run through it. But before partaking in this Oso Portuguese potable, how did port wine come into being here? It actually came about because of a war between France and England, of all things. Back in the late 17th century, during one of the many wars between the Brits and the French, the Brits couldn't get the good French wine. So they tried to import Portuguese wine. The problem was a lot of the wine spoiled during the long haul. So they took young, partially fermented Portuguese wine, which was still sweet from some of the sugars not yet converted into alcohol, and injected it with brandy, upping the alcohol content to around 18% and making it stable for the journey to the motherland. All this history is making me thirsty. So I hit the riverbanks and crash Sandeman's port wine, where I shall drink with none other than George Sandeman himself. Are you the king of the whole place? His family founded this place seven generations back. And no, he doesn't usually dress like that. But for three sheets, why not? We should probably drink. We should have some drinks. He's gonna walk me through the three basic categories of port wine, starting with the white. It's got a, a, a nice little touch of sweetness to it, which makes a very nice aperitif. Uh -huh. The white port, like white wines, should be chilled. As for the red, George says the same rules apply as the standard wine, room temp. I was asked by a lady one time, how do you make white, uh, white port? Uh, and it's difficult to say with a straight face, well, actually, we use white grapes. Yeah, white grapes. You know, so you say, well, actually, we use exactly the same process, but in the case of white port, we use white grapes. Oh, that's so nice. In very this political. Case, well, well, I yeah. see. I would say, uh, with white grapes, dumbass. <laughs> so white port, white grapes. Ruby port, red grapes. The next one is a little less obvious. So this is the tawny one. So what gives this port its tawny color? Take it away, professor. Thank you, Zane. <laughs> I'ma drop it. The mad scientist. Yeah, yeah. Tawny starts out as a ruby port, but the way that it's aged makes it a different sort. Here it's moved to a new barrel of wood, leaving behind sediment, making it pure and good. With less sediment in the barrel, the redness goes down, and aging in the wood is a tinge of brown. And that's how you put the tawny in the tawny, the tawny, tawny, <laughs> the tawny, tawny. 
Thank you, Sir Drinks a lot. Uh, yeah. Anyway, because Tawny goes through such extensive aging, the flavors are complicated. Yeah, and I'm gonna say caramel, caramel. However, you would say. Uh, that. it's it's caramel. It's vanilla. Vanilla, absolutely. Vanilla. Uh, I mean, it's, it's completely different. It, it almost tastes... Dried fruits, uh, sort of like uh, dried apricots. I was going to say, I was gonna say, I was gonna say dried apricots. Yeah. So I've had the signature drink of the region, but George says that to truly understand this place, I must delve deeper into Porto's local customs. And as luck would have it, he says there's a bunch of people upstairs who've rented out a small meeting room where they're in the midst of a customary meeting of their formal organization. I'm in! Are you guys ready to have some fun? This is the formal society of the Triperos, or the Tripe Eaters. Mm, tripe. Tripe, by the way, is cow intestines, and in these parts, it's a big deal. See, about 600 years ago, when some Portuguese Navy ships set out to conquer neighboring Ceuta, the locals loaded them up with all the best cuts of meat and kept only the stomach, intestines, and less desirable scraps of meat for themselves. Because of this great sacrifice, the people of Porto have come to be known as triperos. It's good. It's a little stomachy, you know? Now that I've gnawed my way through Porto's signature ceremonial soup, the society decides to let me join the club. Does this make me an honorary member of something? I'd like to make a speech, if I might, to my brethren of the, of the stomach. May, may you be able to stomach anything that comes your way. In celebration of our new bond as fellow triperos, they whip out the good stuff. This is the green wine, which only exists here in the northeast. Okay. The green wine is light and refreshing, but it's red. I don't understand. I gotta tell you, from the name, I thought, my, thought it might be green. The triperos tell me the best way to understand so called green wine is by meeting with one of the most powerful men in all the land a count who owns acres and acres of vineyards dedicated to the creation of this unique beverage. And since my fellow Triperos are people of power and influence, they offer to put in a good word for me. I bid you farewell, my brothers. My brothers in Tripe. Coming up, I get a count oh, cut loose. <laughs> hey, it's a party! It's a nice party. Yeah. It's a nice party. Right now, I'm in Portugal, heading north to the Lima Valley. This is the home of a somewhat confusing wine called Vino Verde, which translates literally into green wine. Now, last night I tasted this stuff, and I gotta tell you, it didn't seem green to me. From the name, I thought it might be green. So I'm gonna get to the bottom of this with an authority on the matter who's kind of a big shot around here. I'm sitting here with the Count of... Calleros. 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 It's okay. Calleros. Yes. And um, you're an actual Count. Yes, I am. The Calleros Vineyard Estate has been in the Calleros family by right of royal appointment since the 1500s. Of course, like all men of influence in Portugal, he too has a medallion. Show me your medal. But we're not here to compare our bling. We're here to talk about some of the different kinds of vino verde made right here on his estate. Here's where it gets a little crazy, Count. This is vino verde, but it's red. It is red. It is, it is red. <laughs> and your eyes went huge. Vino verde. Rojo or something like this. Tinto. Tinto. Okay, I think it's time to pull out my three sheets guide to Vino Verde. Vino Verde Tinto, which is what he calls it, means red, green wine. And the word green is not in reference to the color. In wine talk, green means young. And the wines that the Count makes are considered best when they're young or green. Get it? That this one, you have to drink it in this type oh. of uh, bowl. Drinking vino verde tinto in bowls stems from the old tradition of eating wine-based soups. Well, nowadays they've simplified the recipe to include just one thing, the booze. Now that's my kind of cooking. 
But this is just one of the many vino verdes that the Count has in store for me. You pour it like fun like Very that. Very nice. So, 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 so. Obviously, this wine is made from green grapes, which is why it's white. And just like the grapes used to make the vino verde tinto, these grapes yield a wine that is better suited to be consumed within a year of bottling. Oh, it's a little, it's a little bubbly, right? Absolutely. And you can drink it as much as you want. As it, much as I want? Yes. The Count says you can drink a lot of this wine because it has less alcohol than most other wines, around 9%. And the reason for this is because the grapes used to make Vino Verde, both red and white, have low sugar content. And the sugar is what gets converted into alcohol during fermentation. So less sugar in the grapes means less alcohol in the end product. Okay, I've had the white and I've had the red, but now he wants me to drink his red and white spumante. But this is spumante. You have yeah. to, uh, special to have this. Have the cork fly up. Okay, before cracking it, Remember in France, how careful they were to minimize the release of gas when opening the bottle? Well, apparently, eh, the Count didn't get the memo. Hey, yeah, it's, it's a party! It's a party, it's yeah. a nice party. Woo! Woo! <laughs> like Champagne, Vino Verde Spumante undergoes a second fermentation in the bottle. But the next one, Vino Verde Tinto Spumante, looks a lot different from the other sparkling wines I've seen in the past. The one that I have to risk this, I'm a little bit afraid of that because it's not easy. It's no. a, because you're, and you're shaking the bottle I, I, up a little bit too. I think you shake it. I, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I knew yeah. it. You shake uh, it before. I didn't shake it. Yes, you shake it. You, you know what? You know how close you show. came to the sound guy? It's I didn't shake, shake it. I would never shake, shake the before. Count's glass because I'd be afraid that he'd kill me. Because yeah. I know the Count's can do that. See how dark that is? It gets its unusually deep red color because a lot of the color and flavor from the red skins are used to impart more full-bodied characteristics. It's considered a good drink with spicy food and rich meats. But be careful when opening because blowout could seriously stain your clothes. You are. Let's get the Let's hell go. out of here. Okay, I've had fancy wines with guys in fancy outfits and big medallions. But I'm on my second day in Porto, and I still haven't been to one single bar. Not only that, I haven't had one sip of beer. And Portugal is supposedly home to one of the world's most renowned beers. So I ditch the hills and head for Porto to a place called Shakespeare. Yep, they should have beer here. Nuno, a regular here, has agreed to talk beer with me. This is sort of the, um, like the cradle of life of yes. beers in Portugal. Oh. Like this is the one dollar bill. This, this is where everything started. This so-called cradle of life of beers is the one and only Superbach, a Portuguese beer made from the famed spring waters of Leixa de Balio. They say it has a special flavor because of that water. The special flavor has earned this beer the honor of being the only beer in the world to have won 15 consecutive gold medals in the Mont Selection de la Qualité, a worldwide beer competition. That's a good beer. So like a really not so strong, honest beer. One thing that's not so honest about this beer is the name. Well, this is actually um, a fake thing because Bach is a kind of a beer. But this beer is not a Bach, this is right. a Pilsner. Right. Bach beer is typically very malty and thick, but the brewers didn't really know that back in 1927 when they first named it Superbach. Somebody got it wrong, but everything is already, you know, set, so they say nobody will ask, and when they ask, this will be like the name. To go with our non-Bach Superbach food. This but is, this is Francesinha. The Francesinha is a typical Portuguese bar food. 
but it was inspired by French cuisine. This uh, a Portuguese immigrant that went to France and came back, he was uh, used to eat that, that sandwich they call the... Croque Monsieur! There you go, sir. Well and done. Love this. Yeah, but then the Croque Monsieur is very, you know, Frenchy and very, very French. oh, very, very small and very... Is it oh. like this? Like, oh. is it French man? No. no. So the Portuguese guy, well, I'm going to do it more manly. Yeah. So he added, you know, he added the extra sauce and the extra steak and then everything on it. Everything you can And the really make. spicy sauce, so... I mean, everything he had in the fridge, he threw so, into a sandwich. Everything. It's a light snack of steak, plus ham, a little bit of sausage, plus salami, plus bread, melted cheese, and a spicy secret sauce dumped all over the top. And to go with our gut bombs, a Superbach Amber Ale. Well, sort of. It's like a, a lighter, reddish, summer drinking beer. Yeah. So it still has a very distinct flavor, and I um, actually like it a lot. That rings a bell. Remember when I was in Brazil? Yeah, it's a tropical ale. A tropical ale. ale. Oh, yeah. We've never heard that before. A tropical ale, that's the concept. Saúde. So. Apparently, the Portuguese-speaking countries <laughs> like their amber light, but Superbach also makes the light dark, if that makes any sense. It's a stout, but it's, it's halfway between a stout and a bock. Basically, it doesn't taste as heavy as most English stouts, and Nuno says that complements the warm weather of Portugal. That is a smooth-going stout. I really enjoy Guinness. Guinness, for me, that's, that's, that's the stout of all stouts. But this is a good light stout. It's, it's very light, refreshing, and it goes down really smooth, and it's excellent, chilled. I would say this, as a summer stout, is fantastic. If you want to try any of these beers yourself, you're going to have to buy a plane ticket, because it ain't for sale in the States. With our award-winning non-box Superbox beers down, Nuno's ready to show me something different. Coming up, a secret cocktail shrouded in mystery. Then you feel your mind just... Like, don't you feel the, the eternal sunshine, like, going on? No? What the hell are you talking about? Right now, I'm in Porto's Rebeda neighborhood, and my newfound drinking buddy, Nuno, wants me to try a Portuguese twist to a popular English cocktail. What the hell is this? Well, this is a sort of a Portuguese-English invention. Instead of the gin, the, you know, the, the queen gin, they will put uh, white port and tonic, what? and they'll sip it all, all through sunset. That's a classy thing. That's romantic. OK, this is getting a little weird. No, it's not, it's See not the pinky? Big. Let's go. We need a change of atmosphere. So Nuno takes me to a place called Esta Sebem, which means be good. It's a popular watering hole among locals who often come here for their legendary mystery drink. This drink, which has a secret recipe, it's good for your for your mind. Good for your mind. Yeah. I uh, we'll see about that. Kill it. No, sir. <laughs> Is it right? <laughs> Drop it on your head. We're good. <laughs> Are you right, saying? What the f is that, man? That's good. Seriously, my nipples are hard. <laughs> Rumor has it that this mystery drink is made from any space liquor, kind of like ouzo and cachaça, a Brazilian sugarcane-based spirit. But the owner refuses to confirm or deny the rumors. He actually mixes the concoction during closing hours into spent booze bottles like this one. His hair going on your chest it's good, now. Come on, it's good for your mind. What are you talking about? Then you feel your mind just like. Then you feel the, the eternal sunshine, like, going on, no? What the hell are you talking about? I'm not feeling eternal sunshine. So Nuno orders up a different, not so secret, but equally popular shot of Gingina. Cheers, I don't have no idea what I'm putting in my belly here. <laughs> ah. Gingina is a Portuguese sweet liqueur. It's basically an infusion of colorless Portuguese brandy, ginger berries, which are kind of a bitter cherry, and sugar. Its alcohol content is around 25% or 50 proof. 
Now his hair growing in his chest. Now hair is growing through my nipples. Local folklore says that Chinjina can cause hallucinations, but I can attest no hallucinations here. As for hangovers, that might be a different story. I dusted many glasses of green wine, pounded more quantities of Superbach beer, forced myself to down the dorkiest cocktail I've ever had, topped it all off with shots of mystery booze, and now this. Tomorrow could be a rough one. Yep, this so-called drink for your mind did nothing for my mind. I need something nutritious and rejuvenating, and my drinking buddy Nuno has invited me to meet him at a restaurant called Ogaveto, where he says they serve something that's perfect for me, Zane Lamprey. Yes, that's, that, that's a lamprey. The lamprey eel is actually not an eel. It's a freshwater sucker fish. You guys suck. Just like a lobster tank, you pick the one you want. I don't look at this and say, wow, yum. Well, you have to be Gotta a man. have it. You have to be a man here. I mean, you've been, you've been around. You know a thing or two about a thing or two. So. Are you, are you, like, you call me out? You tell me that if I was a real man, I'd just, I'd suck it up. <laughs> I'd suck it up. <laughs> Once I've chosen my victim, they pull him out right before my eyes. Okay, I'll, I'll have that one. Before taking me back there, the guys warned me that in the kitchen, this poor sucker is in for a world of hurt. First, it's stuck in hot water. Hot enough to shock it into submission, but not yet kill it. The tough outer layer of skin is then scraped off, it's covered in wine, and finally put out of its prolonged misery with some carefully placed cuts, where it's left to boil and wine in its own blood. Well, this is a perfect cure for your hangover. Because it's cooked in its own blood, it's very high in iron. How you eat it? Uh, with, with currants and guts. I eat the guts with guts. So, how does it taste? It's tangy. It is. It's like it's, it's like a chicken, but it lives underwater with all the gelatins around it. Yeah. Them. And then, but it's sort of wild, so it has a really different taste. As I savor this most unusual chicken of the river. Wow. That's good lamprey. The owner takes notice of my trite medallion and realizes that we are brothers. That's your brother. What? This is tripe. And this is wamper. And he's tripe and wamper. So he's the vice president of, of, the, of the tribe, of the tribe um, brotherhood, and he's the vice president of the wamper brotherhood. Well, now that I've had the lamprey eel, and I'm a lamprey, he tell me, talk he, to me. Is he gonna give me that? Is he gonna make me an honorary brother? He said yes. If you, but you have to behave. Heyo! Two medallions in one episode. You do the special lamprey handshake. And it... Is that the handshake? That's what me and my mom do. Thank you. Thank you, brother. That's an honor. That's a, that, that is a good way. My hangover is gone. I met a guy in a cape, got a medallion from people in robes, got a buzz with a count. <laughs> It's a party. Party. And now, another medallion. Yeah, that's right. And more cool regalia. Porto, Portugal. I'm starting to feel pretty important around here. Hey, how the hell are you? You're in the car. It's like putting a sponge in my stomach. Sort of. But it actually is the same principle. Oh, you gotta go like this. I know, I know. All Don't right. slap me, I know. Now, now look into the camera. Be racy, though. Don't smile. No, be, no, be fierce. Be fierce, George. <laughs>